Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am Sarah Klubain. I am the Boone County Hospital Foundation Director, and I'm so pleased today to have uh, Christine Fenton here with us to speak of, about uh, diabetes and wound care. She works with Restorix and actually lives out of the state of Iowa, so I'll let her share a little bit more about herself when we get started. But I just really quick want to say that, as you all know, probably by now, that these programs are all uh, sponsored by the Boone County Hospital Foundation, and we are continuing to have them online through the winter. We're not um, quite to the point where we're having uh, full visitors into the, the hospital again, but I've had several people ask me if we're going to uh, ever you know, go back to in person, and, and I think that that would be the goal at some point to do that. So having said that, we also next month are looking at hopefully bringing in somebody uh, to do a program on nutrition as we head into the holidays and the new year. That's always a good topic and I'm still working on that. So I'll keep you all posted. Please watch all your normal news outlets uh, to watch for that. So without um, any more of listening to me, I already got to listen to a good portion of this presentation. Christine uh, just is a delightful pre presenter and I look forward to hearing this today. So thank you, Christine, for being here. Thank you, Sarah. This is such a joy. I am a nurse and have been for more than 20 years. And of course, one of my favorite things is connecting with uh, patients. Luckily in my role, I do get to impact the patient experience through interacting more with the employee side. Um, so my role is regional director of clinical training. And as you mentioned, I'm not Iowa based. I live in Michigan, but my territory goes from Iowa down to Florida. So I interact with a lot of programs, a lot of program directors, and of course there are nurses who provide great care. So I'm excited that I have this opportunity today to uh, do what I love, which is uh, teach and hopefully bring tools and resources to people to better health and experience. So um, like I say, I, I'm in Michigan. I'm married with three kids between us. My oldest is a freshman in college and our youngest is a second grader. And uh, they're a handful and a lot of fun. And um, that's that's a little bit about me. Uh, like I say, we're going to talk today about diabetes and wound care. It's a super important topic. Um, we see in our wound clinics across the country, mainly chronic non-healing ulcers. And between diabetic wounds of the lower extremity, pressure injuries, and venous like ulcers, those make up 70 to 75% of the wounds that we see. So diabetes is a huge topic um, that we're addressing every day in our work lives. And it's important for community members to know kind of what's happening um, in our country as far as statistics go. And if you've been told you're pre-diabetic or you have diabetes or you know someone who does, it's really nice to know some prevention strategies, um, which we'll cover today, and then what to do should you develop a wound. So that's how we'll spend our time. And of course, if you have questions at the end, we can certainly address those. So we'll get rolling here. Um, I want to make sure that everyone knows that when we talk about diabetes today, we're not only talking about type 2, but type 1 as well, even though that's far less uh, prevalent in our country. Right now, type 1 and type 2 diabetes uh, do affect over 34 million people. That was as of 2018, and we're currently riding a wave up um, as we see an uptick in diagnosis of diabetes. Um, you should know that that's about 10% of our population, so it is a massive problem. Uh, among people aged 65 years and older, more than 25% had diabetes in 2018, so you think one in for adults that you might know over the age of 65 are battling with diabetes. Um, so it's it's no small thing. And among the other things that diabetes causes, and we'll kind of talk about a little bit of that along the way, the most common complication is often a foot ulcer or a wound of the lower extremity. And you'll see on this slide here, we have some very pertinent statistics um, that people should just be aware of so that you know that if you get a breach in your skin, you want to take care of it immediately. So for people with diabetes, there is a 25% lifetime risk that you'll develop a foot ulcer. 
And when you develop a foot ulcer, there is a 50% chance that you'll develop a limb-threatening infection. Our skin is in place to protect all of our internal organs. And when there's a breach in that, any kind of opening, that's just a window for bacteria to get in and wreak havoc. Um, so it's important to know then, too, if you're one of those who develop a limb-threatening threatening infection, 20% uh, of those people will require an amputation of some degree. And statistics do show, sadly, that once a person has an amputation, there is up to a 70% a chance that they will die within five years. Um, so it, it's very serious. And once you have one amputation, the, the chance that you'll have a second is very high. 85% um, of amputations that happen are preceded by a foot ulcer. So there is some time to get things under control before an amputation, but you really don't want to delay. Um, and then you'll see that last little statistic there in blue, 60% of non-traumatic lower limb amputations do occur in people with diabetes. And then you see the fact at the bottom too, it, you can just see amputation is a serious problem. And remember that when an amputation happens, first off, a person with diabetes is already suffering on some level. When you have an amputation, that can seriously impact your mobility, which then increases maybe the more sedentary part of a lifestyle, which can lead to more problems. So you can see that it, it's not just oh, they're missing a toe now or they're missing part of a foot. We've really potentially impacted someone's whole life when we take part of their body. So it's important to know that your feet are very much at risk when you have diabetes. So diabetes um, in the type 1 patient, this is someone who um, has maybe an autoimmune disorder. That's the theory from CDC is that an autoimmune problem troubles your pancreas and you're able to make little to no insulin. And so your goal of treatment there is to keep those blood sugars at a very even level. A type 2 diabetic, um, they often will develop their disease over time through lifestyle choices um, such as diet and uh, exercise or a lack thereof and other factors that play into that. Um, but what, regardless of what type you have, uncontrolled blood glucose can lead to a loss of elasticity in your blood vessels. Uh, what that means is your blood vessels will um, not expand and contract like they do in the healthy person, and they will end up hardening and narrowing so that you can't get as much blood flow, oxygen, and nutrients through as you normally would have. Um, and what this can lead to, of course, is nerve damage, high blood pressure, all sorts of troubles. So um, I know that's just in a little nutshell about what you can expect if, if you know someone with diabetes or you have it yourself. Um, but these problems that occur because of diabetes can cause serious foot problems. Um, our diabetic friends, because of the way the physiology goes, they are more likely to have calluses or those um, hard, rough patches of skin, uh, dry skin, of course, the nerve damage I've mentioned. And when you have these problems, you are more likely to have open sores develop on your feet. And as we've mentioned, that can lead to infection. So it's very serious. This neuropathy that I'm thinking of um, and mentioning is a reduced sensation in your hands or feet. Um, this comes from the nerve damage caused first by that blood vessel damage. So remember, um, a person with diabetes may be losing sensation at those extremities. And so think about it, if you, if you lose sensation, um, if you step on something, you might not feel it right away. And then along with the loss of feeling in the feet, these same changes that take place can affect your vision as well. So at insult to injury, maybe you can't feel what's happening on your feet, and then maybe you can't see it either. So it doesn't take long for small wounds to become serious in a person with um, advanced diabetes. So you think to yourself, well, I don't want this to happen to me or to my loved one. Um, and that is very smart thinking. I do not either. Um, so what can we do to prevent? There are some relatively simple things, but as with anything, if you want to make a change, it's got to be very intentional. You've got to plan to make things better, right? 
So there are going to be uh, this slide in the next. There's six or seven prevention strategies we're going to mention here. They're all very practical. So the first thing we mentioned is to check your feet daily. Ideally, um, you have some time where you are able to sit and take a look at your feet. And what you're looking for are blisters, calluses, any areas where there's chafing or redness. Those are big red flags that you're about to develop a problem. So we want to make sure that you're looking for those on a daily basis. And I happen to still have a little flexibility in my middle age um, and I can get my feet up on my lap, but I know that not everyone can. And so our advice is generally speaking, you can use a handheld mirror to help you see the bottoms of those feet. But if that is still not easy for you to do, please don't hesitate to request that a loved one or friend help you take a look. I'm sure people will be happy to help you take good care of yourself. So um, definitely daily foot checks. While you're down there playing with your feet, um, we want you to make sure that you keep those feet supple, moist, um, tops and bottoms only though. Uh, lotions used between the toes can be bad for you because the moisture there, again, you don't regulate everything as well when you're diabetic. The moisture will just sit and potentially cause fungal infection, which is no good either. So keep them moist, um, but only on the tops and bottoms. And then your footwear, there's two points here that I want to make. Um, first off, your footwear that you choose should be what we call proper. It should be sturdy, well-fitting, and definitely closed-toed, which is bad news for those of us who like to wear open toes in the summer. Um, I am a lover of flip-flops, I can't deny. But, um, you know, if you have diabetes, it is very prudent to keep your feet covered, not only outside, but inside the house too. Just in the course of your daily travels, running the vacuum, or bringing laundry to and from, or um, you know any number of things that you might be doing in your home, we bump our toes. It just happens, backs of chairs, um, coffee table, that kind of thing. So your closed-toed shoes can really help protect in or out of the house. And then along with having your shoes uh, be well-fitting, you wanna make sure they're well-maintained. So inspect those shoes every day. It sounds kind of funny. I mean, I don't know about you, but my daily habits, pick up my shoes, put them on, or if you're more like me, you just sort of stand there and wiggle your foot in without even giving it a second thought. Um, but if you have diabetes, I do urge you to really take a good look at your shoes every day. Pick them up off of the floor. Give them a shake. Uh, we, The example I like to use is we have a fire pit in our backyard. And if I go out there, it is guaranteed I'm getting a pea gravel in my shoe. If I had neuropathy, I may not be able to feel that under my foot. And that's a big deal. Um, luckily, I, I can, so I pull it out right away. But if, if a person has neuropathy, every morning a good practice is just to pick up those shoes, give them a shake, make sure there's nothing foreign inside. And then while you've got the shoe in your hand, you're looking at the outside, making sure that your shoes are in good repair. There aren't any tears. There's not a separation between like the rubber and the canvas or the rubber and the leather um, that would allow moisture in. And then too, you're looking on the inside to make sure there aren't any rough spots or tears there that could rub against your skin and cause you a problem. And then hand in hand with good shoes are good socks. Um, you don't normally think probably about the quality of your socks other than do they look cute with what I'm wearing today? Um, so, when you choose your socks, we urge you to choose socks that wick away moisture. Um, so usually something with a high cotton blend, um, something too that doesn't have a seam in it, which seems a silly thing to think about, but the seams, especially in a person who has compromised skin or is more sensitive, those seams can really rub and cause open areas on the skin. So you wanna be super mindful. And take note too that you often can't just run into the local Target or Walmart to grab diabetic socks. Um, um, these are typically ordered online or through a specialty shop. So if you don't know where to go to get diabetic socks, I would urge you to speak to your, uh, care, your primary care physician. They can often recommend sites where you can go pick those up or your local pharmacy might be able to point you in the right direction. We have an apothecary shop here in the Lansing area that sells all sorts of things that you might not be able to pick up at your typical pharmacy. 
um, washing those feet daily. I almost feel like I should have put that on the other slide um, that goes kind of hand in hand with inspecting your feet every day. But regardless, uh, we want you to shower or bathe those feet. And when you do, make sure that those get dried thoroughly. For the same reasons you don't want to have lotion between your toes, you also don't want to have water that sits between your toes. So use that towel and give yourself a good toe floss. It keeps everything extra clean and certainly dry. And then, of course, choose your appropriate socks and footwear to cover. And then to music to my ears is get a pedicure. Keep those toenails clipped and even. Um, you want to be sure to avoid ingrown toenails. I know some people are more prone than others. Um, so you never want to be down there picking and pulling. Just use the appropriate tools to clip those toenails. Um, if you can't do it for yourself, absolutely recruit someone to help you with that task. It's very important that you just make sure you don't have any snaggly toenails that can cause any uh, open sores on your feet. And then an overall call to manage your, your diabetes. Ideally, if you've been diagnosed, you're someone who's in good contact with your primary care physician or your endocrinologist, and we want them helping you to not only manage your diabetic disease, but also to kind of manage your whole self. Um, as I mentioned, people with diabetes, because of the changes to their blood vessels that the uncontrolled sugars can cause, you are at higher risk for things like stroke and heart attack. So watching things like like your blood pressure, your cholesterol levels, your providers will help you monitor those things routinely. And it's just very important for you to do that for your safety. Of course, eating healthfully, getting connected with a nutrition specialist. So especially if you need to know some of the ins and outs of a diabetic diet recommendation, those are absolutely the experts you want to be connected with. Um, take medicines as your doctor prescribes them and make sure you're Follow-ups are routine so that if adjustments need to be made, that they can. Um, exercising regularly, even if it's just a walk around your neighborhood every day, don't allow yourself to be sedentary. Be up, moving, and intentional about getting some focused uh, exercise time. And if you are a smoker, please, please stop. Um, you know now that diabetes will affect the elasticity of your blood vessels, leading to a narrowing. And every time a person smokes a cigarette, the nicotine vasoconstricts or causes your vessels to narrow. And so further, you can't get that oxygen and nutrients down to where they need to go. And so it really is a double whammy if you're a smoker and you have diabetes. And if you're a person who does smoke and just can't find the way to quit or you won't quit, if you can cut down, anything you can do to reduce your nicotine intake can be a positive uh, benefit for you. And then, of course, follow up and have your routine medical checkups. So those are the main prevention strategies. I'm sure other people have come up with more, but those are the ones we like to kind of lead with. Um, and if you are a person with diabetes and you've done absolutely everything you can to prevent it, but you still wind up with a wound, I want you to take heart and know that you're definitely not alone um, and that there's absolutely excellent treatment in your community that you can receive if you do develop a wound. So I would urge you to not wait. Even the smallest breach in your skin, especially on your feet, should be addressed as soon as possible so that we can get you closed up quickly and reduce your risk of infection. Um, you see here, there's no such thing as a minor wound to the foot. Um, so where would you go for that? Absolutely, you can call upon your routine provider and they will do their best to help you. But often you need the love of a dedicated wound center, much like the wound clinic at Boone County Hospital. They do a wonderful job there. And the cool thing about them and also the center at Mary Greeley, one of my other partners and local to you guys in Ames, they specialize in providing treatment for those chronic or non-healing wounds. And like I mentioned early in the presentation, almost 75% of the wounds that we see are chronic non-healing and in just three etiologic categories. So we treat this stuff every day and you're who we want to take care of. You're you with the wound. You're the you're why we uh, exist, and we're good at what we do for you. Um, what's neat about our centers is we use a lovely library of specialized dressings. Often you go to your providers' offices, and they have a limited selection because they see such a variety of things in the day. But by nature of the work that we perform every day. We're justified in having this selection of products that allow us to change the dressing based on your level of drainage, 
your peri wound or surrounding skin appearance, and of course, whatever the wound bed looks like. And we change it up as often as it needs to be changed, just so that we can keep your regimen fresh and keep you healing. And in addition to that, um, we do use some surgical techniques at the bedside that can also take wounds that have been in place for a long time and often bump them into that healing uh, phase. So the other thing, too, that's really neat to know, and especially about Boone County and, too, if you're interested, Mary Greeley, both of these centers each have two hyperbaric oxygen therapy chambers. And this is a treatment that's proven to accelerate wound healing. And I'll give you a little bit more on that in just a minute. Um, but I do want to let you know that at our wound centers, we also have wound specialists. And uh, in particular, at Boone County, we have two excellent providers. Dr. Teal, he's been their medical director there since 2016. He is very much dedicated to the wound care cause. And Mallory Bender, physician assistant, she has joined the team a little more recently, but she is highly interested in wounds. Both of these will give you treatment that focuses specifically on your wound, they will both uh, promote the use of advanced dressings and any other wound specific therapies that they feel are warranted in your individual case. And again, I say with the techniques that we use, so often we meet people who've been battling these wounds for weeks or months and they come to us and with our standard and comprehensive way that we provide care to all of our patients, you can take one of those long standing wounds and flip it and get it healed to completion. And it is such a rewarding time for those patients who've been dealing with this um, because as you may know wounds can it not only affect um, affects your risk for infection but it can really impact your self-esteem and your body image um, you know it's a delicate thing and wound care is an intimate thing and our wound care specialists and our team they're sensitive to that and they want to take good care of you so, um, like I say, we do this wonderful comprehensive care in our centers, and then hyperbaric oxygen therapy is available in many of them. And if you don't know what this is, this is just such a cool treatment. Um, there's a, been a ton of research around HBO, that's short for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And so far to date, our friends at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services have approved 16, I think it's 15 or 16, uh, diagnoses that are able to get into the chamber and receive good benefit from getting in. And in our centers, just by nature of how we run our show and where patients present with these various problems, we typically dive five to six different um, diagnoses. And included in this relative to our conversation today are Wagner grade three or four wounds of the lower extremity and type one or type two diabetics. So that's why it's pertinent to our conversation. But what this is, is you can see the picture of a, a typical chamber here. It is a, a large machine. Uh, it's in a big hollow acrylic tube. And the idea is that we slide the gurney out the patient hops on in uh, special jammies, that's what I call them. They are usually 100% uh, cotton gown or scrubs that we put you in and you slide on the gurney into the chamber and it is sealed and you get to watch TV or take a nap usually. And what we do is we gradually increase the pressure in the chamber to what is about two and a half times the pressure in the atmosphere. And the effect here is you're breathing 100% oxygen during that time and that high pressure dose of oxygen what it does is it saturates your plasma and it helps your blood carry more oxygen down to those injured tissues and it helps promote wound healing um, the treatment depending on what dose your pr provider prescribes as far as how many atmospheres you're going to you'll be in the clinic two to two and a half hours a day for four to six weeks um, depending so it is a big time commitment um, like i say often our standard techniques will get wounds healed but when you just just need the extra oomph to get over the hump, a lot of times HBO is absolutely the right thing to get you going. And some other fun facts about HBO, um, in addition to, to that, you know, high concentration of oxygen really uh, pumping up the healing, it will activate your white blood cells to better fight infection. Those leukocytes get excited in the presence of a lot of oxygen and it causes them to do a better job cleaning up debris and fighting bacteria uh, when you're in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And another kind of fun fact is that some antibiotics, depending on their mechanism of action as to how they break down bacteria, some of those uh, antibiotics break down by crossing 
the bacterial border through oxygen. So you can imagine this high concentration of oxygen just really has a synergistic effect with your antibiotic and it can really enhance the efficacy. So some pretty cool stuff that we're able to offer. So who does this? Well, today we are highlighting our friends at Boone County Hospital Wound Clinic, and they are awesome. Tara and her team, um, they have been there rocking it out. Tara has been there for eight years. And what I love to tell about this team is that collectively together, they have over 80 years of healthcare experience and 25 plus in wound care alone. And so they know their stuff over here. They are a joyful group. Um, they, they know their products. They know hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and they love to help people. Um, I told you that I'm kind of across the country, but I've, I visited Boone, I think probably three times in the last year and a half. And I'm telling you, every time I go there, they are warm, they're smiling, they joke a lot with their patients. Um, and they're, they're very, they're very fun loving and they're very serious about what they do. So truly you're in great hands if you need to go see them. So we've come to the end of my presentation, but I just want to encourage you, if you have a wound or a sore, or you know someone who does, don't hesitate to give us a call. The number's here on this slide. And of course, um, Sarah can get you in good contact with the team at, um, at Boone, but you don't need a referral from your provider. Just know that you can call and self-refer. If there's something more that's needed through your insurance provider, we'll get that all figured out. But the main thing is that you get treatment quickly. Um, and, and if you don't have a diabetic wound, but something else is bugging you about your skin, give us a call and we can probably give you some help that way too. So we always encourage early treatment. It's the key to healing. And if it is later in your game, we can still get you healed. Um, they do an excellent job. So with that, I do appreciate your uh, time and attention. And I'd like to just open it up to any questions that you might have. Thank you, Christine. You're such a great presenter and, and just a ton of information shared in, uh, in a short amount of time. And I'm so grateful for all of it because I think I always glean something new or different every time I hear anything about the womb center or even diabetes, the, the st statistics are changing all the time too and um, kind of a, an astounding way. So, um, but I just have a quick, maybe I don't know, comment slash question. Um, when you talk about feet, I'm curious about Dr. Erickson's involvement as a podiatrist here at Boone County Hospital. Um, is he uh, referring to the wound center or is that somebody that we can say, hey, we should be sending people there if they have any issues with their feet, maybe in a prevention mode before they're, or in a prevention preventative way before they're actually experiencing wound wounds? You know, I absolutely would call upon Dr. Erickson if you if you don't have a wound. Good foot care, routine foot care is so important. Um, and of course, Dr. Erickson having a relationship with the hospital, I'm sure is a pretty routine refer when wounds do develop simply because we do have the advanced uh, dressings and hyperbarics in our center. So um, Dr. Erickson is excellent for your routine foot care and I'm sure can manage some wounds on his own, um, but absolutely we wanna have a good relationship back and forth. Sure, great, thank you for that. And then when you spoke about Tara and the team, so Tara's the lead nurse, Yes. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, Mariah and uh, Mary as well are there and they, everyone is fantastic. They have a new program director. She's been with the team now since I want to say August and she is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Catherine Chapel, she is just She's wonderful. If you guys need to talk to um, a leader, she's the one to go to. She can answer any basic questions. Of course, like I say, Tara and her team are super knowledgeable. And if you ever call the clinic, someone will um, make contact with you, call you back. Mallory's great as the uh, physician's assistant. Dr. Teal, of course, is very dedicated uh, to wound care and to all of his patients there. Great, 
Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because it's just like going to the doctor. You see a nurse and you see the doctor and um, and then and just kind of have a similar format in that way, other than the fact that you get to go get a little, a little bit of oxygen to make you feel all great, I bet, <laughs> after that. Indeed. And what's neat, too, is I always say we look at the whole patient, but we have a laser focus on your wound. So we do, as we meet you, we do get a, a thorough history on you, medical, social, surgical. So we have an idea of where you've come from, what other comorbidities you might be dealing with, and that will help inform our care so that you get an individualized plan of care based on what your personal needs are. It's not cookie cutter. Yeah, and I did appreciate that about what you were talking about in regard to it just not not being just about physical aspects, that there is so much more to having a wound and it can affect people's, like you said, self-esteem or emotional feelings about how about all of it. So it just it's really great that you're looking at the the entire person from a holistic perspective. So appreciate yes. that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Did anybody have questions if they want to pop off of mute? You're welcome to chime in. I just had those couple little questions, but I, I see uh, some professionals on here that might have some more insights for us to share with the community. They are, were hearing silence. So, and as I expected, I knew that you were a very uh, good presenter, very thorough, and I, I didn't really anticipate that we would have a lot of questions. So I'm just, again, very grateful to have you here today to share your expertise and wisdom with us. And um, gosh, from, what did you say? Um, you go all the way from uh, Michigan to Florida. I was my furthest point west and down yep. south to Florida. Yep. Um, Jacksonville is my farthest. Wow. So we're lucky to have you today to present and we sure appreciate it. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Take care, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.